You made a very, very wise decision today to join us in the trenches with Dave Lapham, brought to you by First Star Logistics, as always coming to you from the outstanding studios they provide for us, because we are talking with a football lifer, Mark Duffner. Mark Duffner has uh, been around the game for a long time. We're talking about uh, the combine, the draft at the combine with Mark Duffner. We talked to him when he was in his hotel room uh, the week of the combine. Over a quarter of a century of combines he's participated in, and he has been unbelievably valuable in unearthing draft picks as well as college free agents, kids that don't get drafted. And, um, and those are sometimes uncovered initially at the combine as well. But Mark Dufter, man, he's unbelievable with his opinions about personnel and coaching them up. And he's had tremendous successes at the collegiate and professional level. Mark, Mark Duffner is a football guy, and he's proud of it. Welcome once again to In the Trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And as always, we're in the studios that they provide for us so generously. And boy, you are smart to join us today because we have one of the great guys in the game of football. We have a football lifer. This guy by the name of Mark Duffner, uh, and when he was in high school in the Washington, D.C. area, uh, he, he, gets, he gets recruited by a guy named Bobby Ross at William & Mary, and he wants to take him to William & Mary and play for Marv Levy, who's the head coach at William & Mary at the time. And when he gets done playing some college football, as a defensive lineman, Woody Hayes wants him to come to Ohio State as a graduate <laughs> assistant. I mean, we're talking football royalty. I mean, you talk about mentors. So then his first job at Holy Cross as a head coach in six years, he only goes 60 wins, five losses, and a tie. Are you kidding me? Just dominates as a, as a head coach at, uh, at Holy Cross. And then he gets into the National Football League in 1997 as a coach. I mean, again, we're talking about a football life from the Cincinnati Bengals. Very fortunate to have Mark Nufter on the defensive side of their of their coaching staff doing his thing. Coach, welcome. Thank you, Dave. It's a privilege and honor to be with you today. And thank you for, for, for the kind comments, too. Well, I mean, they, they're uh, they're they're well deserved. I mean, it's been it's been a heck of a football life. There's no question about that. I can see you're in a in a hotel room in Indianapolis, uh, combine going on. Things are things are cooking once again, and how how many combines is it now, Coach? How many combines have you been a part of? Shoot, Dave, this, this is my twenty eighth straight. So I've been very blessed to be able to be in Indianapolis for the combine for twenty eight straight years. Twenty eight straight years. That's that's amazing, and I know uh, you're highly regarded by the people uh, that, that put on the combine, and and you're you're one of the privileged coaches that is down on the football field, actually on the field as the players go through their drills and trying to impress uh, people in the National Football League. How big of an advantage is it for you to be right down there as the guys that are showing their wares as such? Well, I'll tell you, Dave, first and foremost, I'm very thankful to the people in the league, the scouts and whatever, to, let, to ask me to be down there and uh, participate and help them in any way I can. It's a tremendous, uh, I think, advantage to either – run a drill or be down there in uh, close proximity, observing, listening to the players, how they can, uh, how they listen to the instructions of the drill, how they're going to perform it, uh, watch them compete, watch them interact with their teammates or the coaches running the drill. So there's, and all, all those things add to the evaluation process in terms of how you're trying to determine, can this man be a, a positive influence and in, in addition to your club? So you want to see, is he a leader or follower kind of thing? You can see that, you know, uh, right right down there, up close and personal. I mean, it's uh, it is it's a heck of a situation. I mean, how how, how much have has the combine changed over the twenty eight years? I mean, how different is the combine today than the one that you participated in like twenty eight years ago? Well, I think it's as far as the testing and all that part of it, the true actual on the field stuff, not that much. However, the uh, the, the length of time that you're in Indianapolis is, is longer right now because they're, they're doing more with the players away from scouts, away from coaches, medical, all kinds of different testing, all different avenues. And so that I think probably the access that we have to the player to interview them, 
whether it be formally or informally, is probably the same, but uh, the access that you have, the actual calendar day access has been spread out, so you're here a little longer. Uh, I think the NFL's done a really good job in, in trying to make it as an efficient evaluative tool that the clubs can use, both as coaches and personnel staff, to come up with an opinion on a player, uh, both from an interview standpoint and also from a testing standpoint. But it makes for it makes for a long day, long days and long week. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. Have I mean, so many guys decide not to work out. You know, quarterbacks in particular are not going to throw, not going to do anything. I just wait for the pro day. How how is that? That's a big change, obviously, from you know 28 years ago. That that everybody wanted to go and compete. I mean, the combine was a big deal. I remember, you know, when I was in college, the Senior Bowl was the game you wanted to get invited to because it was like a mini combine. I mean owners even you know uh general managers head coaches everybody's at the senior bowl and they're all like making a circle around you watching you perform your uh you know your task and everything right there it was it, it was like a big job interview the combine has become that but it's kind of over the years it's changed that way hasn't it well yeah you're you know you're right there's a lot of you'll see starting the testing we start the testing tomorrow with the defensive line and linebackers and you'll see uh, a number of participants that'll say, well, I'm going to uh, wait until my pro day, or now even the Big 12 is having their own kind of a combine on, I think, March 28th or 29th uh, in Frisco, Texas, I think. So they may wait. To, obviously, that's taken the place of some of those schools' individual pro days. Right. Uh, so some some are waiting for that, and, and some have legitimate reasons. Some have they just come off the bowl, you know, either the East-West Shrine game or the Hula Bowl or the Senior Bowl, any of those showcases and coming back from maybe a, a nick or a knack from that participation. Uh, but and then some maybe aren't just ready in their testing. So the combine is still a very worthy uh, part of the process of evaluation. You, you hope that everybody, because they've got all the eyes of the league on them, as you said, owners, GMs, coaching staffs, that they'll participate both in the interview process and also in the testing process. But uh, you take advantage of whatever opportunity you have with these young men prior to the draft. Uh, we'll also have Zoom calls that we'll conduct. So there's there's a lot of work in addition to the film work we've already done uh, to come up with a, a ranking and a process of selection. So when I when I think of the combine now, I think you know two two important things like the M and M. It's the M and M uh, week, not just M and M candy. I'm talking about medical and meetings. You know, it's like. Medical part of it is a big deal, particularly if a guy has had some sort of a surgery. I mean, that's everybody wants to make sure that they have, you know, their hands on these guys. And uh, they'll do that, obviously. There's combined doctors, but individual team doctors will do that later. But to, to get, get a handle on how they have recovered and all that sort of thing. And then the meetings with the players, like you talk about the actual interview sessions with those players. That, that's big, isn't it, to look a kid in the eye and really figure out what he's all about? Yeah, very much so. And, and although I'll say this too, over the years, you've asked uh, how has it evolved a little bit. I, the the players now are much more prepared and rehearsed for the interview process than they used to be when I first had the privilege to do it 28 years ago. Right. And I, and I, again, if I was an agent and I had a client, I'd probably want him to be prepared too. I'd prepare him also to do the best he can. Um, and we get a limited time. You know, there's a time frame of 15 minutes for the informals and probably that even in the formal interview. So you kind of just kind of whet your appetite on the player, an initial opinion. And then you'll follow that up with in-person visits as we go to visit pro days or set up individual workouts. And then, then coupled with we're allowed, there'll be three Zoom opportunities, I believe, starting after the combine that you'll be allowed to have. So all of those will go into that interview process evaluation and how, you know, what you think positively and negatively of a player. The cognitive testing has been kind of uh, adapted and changed a little bit. Uh, in, in my mind, it's like, what, what kind of football smarts do, the, do these guys have? And he, even back in like 1974, when, you know, I was going through the process, um, we didn't have a combine or anything like that, but the coaches, like they would come to the all-star games you're talking about. And I, I made their circuit, man. I went blue gray, East West Hula Senior Bowl. I was gone five weeks, man. Four All Star games. I made the run, and it, it was great. So then coaches uh, would come to, to Syracuse for the one on one. You know, they time you and and all the uh, put you through a little uh, agility drills and things of that nature. And then 
they take us in back in the day. It was a blackboard, not a grease board. It was a blackboard. And I remember Bill Tiger Johnson with the Bengals game, and he started drawing all these defenses up on the board. And he goes, all right, here's our pro, pro defense, 4-3 look. Here's our Ram Week, which is like an under look. You know, defensive linemen are away from the tight end covering the center. And then here's the over. Uh, we, we called it Ram Strong, Ram Week, over and under. You know, the defense shifted over the tight ends. And here's here's all these different defenses. He diagrammed them up there. And he, he put them up there for a while and, and you know, and then started doing some other things, erased them, started doing some other things on the, on the blackboard. And then after about a half an hour, he goes, all right, David, you, you come up here. Will you draw Ram Week for me? You know, draw the defense. So he wanted to see what kind of retention, you know, and it was like, hey, and this, this, is, this is pretty interesting, you know. Um, and, and Paul Brown, as is, is, you know, I mean, Paul was big on – when I was a rookie, it was like he, first test he gave us for assignments, he didn't want you to know just what you were supposed to do. He didn't want you tunnel visioning on what you were doing. If you were pulling guard, center reaching, back and blocking down, fullback filling, what's going on? What's going on around you? So he gave you two grades. Grade for your assignments up in the upper left-hand corner, the whole team's assignments in the upper right-hand corner. Paul Brown, man, I mean, he – a big part of what he wanted to evaluate with players, how much football intelligence, what kind of football IQ do they have? That's a big deal in this process, isn't it? Very much so. And as you mentioned, Paul Brown, what an innovator he was in all areas, whether it be coaching, whether it be uh, strategy, whether it be in player acquisition, player evaluation. I mean, I mean, what he, what you just described is what we're still doing today in terms of trying to assess a, a, a player's ability to learn in a short time is recall ability and then and then the depth of his intelligence or awareness in terms of football so i mean i i mean everything i continue to hear it's i hear it even today uh wow way out in front of it way ahead of the curve in terms of um, coach brown and what he was all about but yeah no we're we're trying to uh we when we meet with these players trying to determine again what kind of depth of football nods they have not only their position but of their scheme of what they're their uh, teammates are supposed to do. Uh, and when, and during that process, it also just reveals a lot about the character of the player. And that, you know, I, I got to say real quickly that uh, Duke Tobin, the personnel staff, Mike Brown, Katie, Troy, and then the coaching staff led by Zach Taylor have done a great job, I believe, in not only bringing in, we think, top athletes, but top people. And it's the it's in the total package, the character, the drive, the competitiveness of the player that we brought recently to the Bengals, I think, which has allowed really the push we have towards championship, you know, and winning. I know that uh, everybody in the organization has a high regard for your opinion on all that kind of thing. Um, you, you, you are a, a big, big piece of, of, of that entire process. And they, they do, they lean on, they lean on your opinions. I mean, I, I know that, uh, I've heard that from from multiple uh, places, and um, that's 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 just I, I think that's a testament. I mean, you've got tremendous people skills, and that that's something that either you can, you know, it, it's it's uh, I guess you don't want to be conned, right? I mean, you you have to you have to okay, is this guy legit or is he, is he conning me? What's going on here? Well, I think that you know again, all of us have uh, uh, people skills and, and and you know sense, if you will, and and. Uh, got opinions and and uh you know i've been fortunate to be around it for a long time both collegiately and and in the nfl and so and this is a people business and so and you really i think any any success in any business but particularly ours so people driven uh you got to be able to connect with players and how do you how do you connect with them and and are they connectable too are they legitimate are they genuine are they are or are they phony in whatever way and so uh uh, having some sense on a lot of that is, is important. And, uh, you know, collectively, the, the club, I think, does a really, really good job of, of going through that process and coming up, we hope, and have been with very high caliber people that happen to be pretty good players, too. So the, the offseason process, I mean, you evaluate your schematic, any tweaks and adjustments that go on there, your veteran free agents. First of all, you decide you had 20 uh, free agents, 16 of them were unrestricted free agents. You tagged T. Higgins. Uh, there were a couple of restricted free agents in the tight end position, a couple of exclusive rights free agents that were tendered. Um, that's uh, that's Browning and, and Adam Itis. So those guys, you know, you, you're down to 17 that you're making decisions on with your own. 
everybody else is free agents, and then the draft. Man, I mean, no, no doubt everybody's team changes from a personnel standpoint, but that's a lot of uh, inventory right there to uh, to take a uh, stock up, isn't it? Oh yeah. Now there's a, there's. <laughs> Uh, let me tell you that the, the the lights are burning long and late at the stadium right now in terms yeah. of uh, the coaching staff and personnel going through the process you just mentioned free agency uh, preparation for the combine study of, of players that are draftable and then now after when the combine concludes and this is far from concluding we're active as heck for the next few days but right. that then further in the process of the free agents uh, the pro free agents and then also diving into the uh, real gathering continuing gathering information on these up, upcoming possible draftees so uh, and then and then also when when we have time finding time to critique and improve uh, schematically what we've done offensively defensively in the special team so it's uh, it, it, there is no real off season i mean we're cranking right now in terms of preparation both in player acquisition and then also improving our ability to uh, come up with in, uh, effective and, and successful scheme to employ when we get a chance to perform on the field coming up. So what, what's the, what's the best performance or maybe a couple of performances you've ever seen by a player at a combine? Is there anybody that just like, Oh my gosh, these guys are all genetic freaks, but that was unbelievable. Or there's so many of them that, you know, you just can't pick one. No, I, yeah, <laughs> that's a great question, Dave. I, I come away every year, you know, with my, you know, just uh, amazed at some of the individual testing that you'll see from these guys, uh, whether it's a, a skilled athlete and their ability to jump or their speed or a bigger guy who also has tremendous explosiveness and jumping or strength or, or, or speed. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, you called it, you said it correctly. I mean, it, they are genetic freaks. And, and, you know, I, I, when I first came, was privileged to work for the Bengals in 1997, and I saw these guys that you know I'd coached in college for 22 years and thought it was, and it was around some of the very best I'm around. Then you get to the NFL and you see some of these guys, and you're you're it's just it's mind blowing. I mean, it's incredible what uh, athletes can do, and in in the 28 years to see even the the growth and development there, improved strength programs, conditioning programs, nutrition size, I mean, all the things that go on, uh, even equipment, they, these young men use shoes and whatever the case may be, what they can do is unbelievable. And I mean, again, it's just, a, it's, it is it is amazing to see the development that uh, these athletes have both mentally and physically. When you're looking at uh, edge guys, which is going to be, you know, one, one of your focuses, it's pretty deep. I mean, there, there's some, there's some pretty pretty good number of guys uh that that are draftable uh coming out of college off the edge now you've got the h boys you you have, you have um you know osai who is uh who's developing um you know you have murphy who's developing you have gunter who's you know still in the picture i mean you, you've got some some young guys and then you have like other free agents the veteran free agents out there i mean it's it's it is quite a process but do you think i mean at number 18 for example Edge probably isn't maybe necessarily the priority, but boy, if somebody slides and it's like, I can't believe that guy's there at number 18. It wouldn't be crazy if you pull the trigger on a guy off the edge, would it be? No, no, not at all. And, you know, I think that we, we all can list a number of edge players, including, as you mentioned, the age boys, but uh, uh, across the league that are dominant players that can impact the game. And uh, I think there's always uh, an eye on that spot because you get a dominant player or two at that spot, they can take over the game and impact the game. But the, the big playability that that position provides is is huge. And so uh, I think that we'll always, I suspect we'll always look at that should something present itself. Yes, we've got a good group, a tremendous group of young men there, uh, as you mentioned, with Trey and and uh, and Sam and with Cam Sample and, and Gunnar, okay. all the, you know, Joseph and, Sure. Miles and Jeff, all those guys. I mean, there's six guys that I'm I'm excited to have the privilege to work with that I think are very productive. Uh, however, we're always looking to improve every position. So, you know, we'll just see how it comes out. But uh, again, it's a tribute. What we currently have there is a tribute to a lot of people's working hard and evaluations. So uh, inside the uh, defensive tackle position, DJ Reader, unrestricted free agent, you know, coming off the uh, the surgery with the torn patella tendon, um, uh, 
uh, Josh Tupal is is amongst the unrestricted free agents. So you think, okay, boy, there's probably fewer guys inside than there are on the edge in terms of the draft, in terms of number of prospects. Does that influence where you might address that possibility, that position? Well, it's, it's a wise man said a long time ago, you better be strong up the middle. And uh, when we, you know, with, with PJ and DJ in there and coupled by Josh and, and Zach and other guys that have you know contributed in there, yeah, I think that's going to be a, certainly an area. It's always an area. You, you, you've you got to be strong up the middle, you know, whether it be the front, the de- interior defensive line, the linebacker position, the safety position. That's always got to be an area of focus and clearly is right now is, you know, we're uh, seeing how DJ comes off of, uh, his surgery and so forth. He, he's looking great. We've seen him looking great at the facility. Uh, very, very integral part to the success of our defense is DJ Reader. So that'll be, a, I hope a, and believe it'll be a strong priority in getting him back into the uh, stripes, if you will, in terms of our, our uniform. But uh, both what what he brings on the field and off the field as a leader, as a, as a community-involved person too. So anyway, yeah, big-time focus in that spot. I think uh, you know some of these these young edge guys. Osai has been, he's been unfortunately uh, the injury bug. You know has has, has infected him. Uh, hopefully that that stays away for a while. The football gods will be kinder to him. Miles Murphy developing from the rookie to the second. I I just remember my rookie year to my second year is like boy as a rookie it's like you don't really know what you don't know. It's it, it is it is a transition and adjustment there. That second year you just feel so much more confident. So much more comfortable about everything. You project Miles Murphy to have that t- that type of a, a year where boy, he's he's got it figured out and he's 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 going to make a move here. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, I think we all saw that during the course of the season this year. Each and every week, as he got opportunities to play, you could see him uh, becoming faster in his play, more instinctive in his play, more cognizant of where the plays were, and uh, and that just comes from repetition. And and uh, he was. He's, he's a very smart young man. He watched his, the, the older players and learned from them. He didn't come in thinking he knew everything. Uh, he was very much a sponge in terms of listening and watching. And I was impressed how he uh, uh, developed into being the pro player that he's starting to continue to be. And then the other thing I think you've got to realize is Joseph Osai really two years ago was his first year. He didn't play at all as a rookie because right. of the injury he had. This was actually his second season right. in terms of actually playing. And thank the Lord, you know, he got through the season healthy. And uh, he's there right now. There's a, we have a number of our players training uh, at Paycor Stadium, and he's one of them. He's there every day. He's, you know, I, I'm very impressed and pleased with the continued development that he's making, uh, certainly right now in the offseason program. So, uh, I, you know, both of these two guys we're going to count on and expect to continue to to ascend in terms of their play and their production, for sure. It seems like, you know, a big part of the uh, uh, the evaluation of the players is their football mentality, their capacity uh, to handle the versatility aspect of it, too, because, you know, uh, Coach Lou Anarumo, he, he likes guys that can do more than one thing. Hey, can he kick inside and rush inside as well as outside? Can he handle that, you know, that type of uh, a versatility and make sure that he's not going to make assignment errors and everything goes along with it? And no, all these guys we've already talked about, these young players and, you know, veteran guys too, DJ Hill, DJ, these guys are all smart guys. I mean, when I talk to these guys in the locker room, they're unbelievably good communicators. They're intelligent dudes, man. And I, I'm sure it translates into football IQ to, too, doesn't it? Yes. And I think, again, what you just said is, is so accurate. The, uh, I think the coaching staff uh, has done a real, real good job, you know, portraying to the personnel staff the type of player that we want. Uh, we want value players. You just mentioned the guys that can, they can rush on the edge, but they can rush inside. You get so much more value. Almost you get a, what we call a twofer. You get two for one when, when guys have that uh, player and position flexibility. Yep. So, uh, you know, and then Coach Anarumo is, is is very adept at trying to take advantage of the strengths of the players and how they can get into positive matchups, if you will, with the opponent. So, uh, I, again, a, a, lot, a lot of praise has to go to the, the personnel staff and the coaching staff collectively working together to put together – this type of roster where you get that kind of value. And we've got to continue to do that. You know, coach, uh, we've talked about this before, but the, uh, you mentioned it, the Cincinnati Bengals 
involve the coaching staff in terms of these personnel decision-making process. Maybe, you know, there's nobody in the league that calls more. I can, I can probably feel comfortable in saying that. It, it just makes so much sense. I mean, you're the guys that live with them every day, teach them, work with them, help them improve. I mean, why, why not get your input? Uh, if, if you're going to have to uh, bake the cake, why can't you be involved with uh, deciding what goes in the recipe, right? Absolutely. And I, and I, I will forever be in debt to, to Mike Brown and the, and the, and the Pete, uh, late, late Pete Brown and uh, the staff that when I joined in 1997, I learned, you know, I've been a collegiate coach for 22 years and, and you know, I had to evaluate players and recruiting and, and all that. And so I, we were all in that, in that environment, but I, I'd never done it as a professional coach. And, and, and the way when I came in, we were and still are very intimately involved in the evaluation process and the selection process. And I'll, I'll be in debt forever to, to Mike and everybody for that experience. I mean, uh, when I first came in, the first six years I was with the Bengals, I was, I was we, not just me, but our coaching staff was on the road for probably uh, six or seven weeks. I went in annually to 45 schools looking at players and evaluating them and testing them. And, and when you can get your hands on them and, and, and then you're responsible now to, to be able and accountable for uh, a, a major part of the decision process on a selection, I mean, that's big time. And, and so I, I, I know I learned greatly from it. I, 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 uh, I welcomed it, but I also valued it and I value it today. And, and what, what our staff has in terms of input to, uh, to the selection process and the, and the ranking of players is, is, is by far, I think, the strongest in the league. And that's when you, if you're going to work your tail off on a, on a project you know, or player acquisition, you want to kind of reap the benefits of those efforts that you put into it. Well, they're, they're valued, uh, highly valued by the, by the Bengal organization, starting at the top of Mr. Brown. And, and boy, I, you know, I think we all deeply appreciate that. You're, you, yeah, you, when you say you're going to be working with these players each and every day, you've got legit input to, to that selection process. I, I don't know how you can beat it. And, and it's not just the drafted players. I mean, I, I know everybody in the organization is is very respectful and appreciative of what you've done going on the road and unearthing these college free agents and, re, and recruiting these guys and, and, and letting them know what it would be like to be a Cincinnati Bengal. And, I mean, you, you've uh, done a hell of a job, uh, you know, being very influential and instrumental in getting a lot of kids that weren't drafted here to Cincinnati and, and a lot of them panned out. And that's a, that's a real talent too, coach, isn't it? Oh, I don't, you know, I, I, I love, and again, it's a, again, another privilege. You get an opportunity to connect with players and hope, uh, bring somebody perhaps that wasn't drafted to, to make the club. I mean, that's a, that's a, yeah. I, I love doing that. And, and I love, yeah. I just love the connection process that we get with these players. In fact, I sometimes get too attached to them between right now and the draft and when we don't get them, I, I come away a little bit on the a little downside, but, uh, but I'm no, it's a, it's a, it's yeah, it's a great, great experience. It's a great process. It's all part of trying to make a, uh, a championship team. And, and thank God we've got that rolling at this time. And, you know, coach, it's not just when the guys get drafted and come in the league, but now in free agency, when a guy goes out into veteran free agency, it's like, the personnel department, everybody, all the coaches, everybody has their notes and has their information on this kid when he was coming out of college. So it's a big collaborative effort. Once again, it's not just a guy making a call on somebody. It's a group effort, you know, with all this input and coming up with the best decision possible. There are so many benefits to it. It's unbelievable. Well, there's no question. And what you just said is, is very, very accurate. I mean, there's, uh, uh, we, I, we have, we all have dealt with guys that, uh, we were close to in the, in the evaluation process prior to the draft that team, we didn't draft them, but we're getting them on the second time as a, as a, a pro free agent. And those connections that you had oftentimes are extremely valuable. One, number one, you know, that you had a pretty good opinion about the player, but the player also knows you. Right. And so now he's, that helps in the, in the, not only the acquisition process, but in the current development or continued development of the player once they've joined your team. So, that's been fun, heck, too. I mean, it, and and again, the, the club here really involves the coaching staff in that. When the, when a when a 
on a free agent visit. So I remember when Riley Reef came, you know, and I hadn't dealt with him before, but I, I got close to him in a date time when he was visiting at the, at the, at the facility. And I told him, I said, pal, let me just tell you, cause I, I thought, I mean, I still think highly of Riley at any rate. I told him, I said, pal, you're not leaving here. I'm not, you're not going to leave unless you become a Bengal. And I got all over him and kind of tussled with him a little bit. And, you know, I love that we all get an opportunity to, to impact these guys a little bit. So it's a lot of fun. Coach. I mean, it's, uh, it's incredible. We're, we're, similar in age and we have similar experience experience with football i mean not not including high, after high school uh and after our, our college career we still we still got 50 50 years we have five decades uh in your case either coaching or or, or you know uh collegiate or, or national football league 70s 80s 90s 2000s 2010 2020s i mean six decades no. uh, 50 years plus you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to say that with uh, the Bengals here in the NFL playing and uh, and from a broadcasting standpoint. So, man, the game's been good to us. But I know one thing, Coach, you've been extremely good for the game of football. No, no. Well, you're kind to say that. No, you – I can tell you, I I would listen – I got to tell you this. And, and uh, I had the privilege to get to know you the first time I was here and the great I, job you've done – and coaching, I saw you playing when I was coaching at University of Cincinnati. And that's when I'd come up to Wilmington and watch you. And, and like you said, we're about the same age. I Although I didn't go to the Hula Bowl to, or to, to do the, uh, the East, uh, East West, the Blue Gray, the Senior Bowl as a player. You know, you, I mean, you, you made the rounds because you were a, a dynamite player coming out of Syracuse University. But at any rate, my point is that uh, uh, when I got a, when I left the Bengals and, and I've listened always for – you know, uh, snippets that would come across uh, of the Bengals when I was coaching at other teams to come back. And I'd always be listening for you and, and your your enthusiasm and what you bring to the fans uh, as a broadcaster, as a former player. Insight, awareness, uh, true energy has been second to none. So well, I would say we've both been blessed to have the privilege to be around this game as long as we have and, and your impact on uh, not just, I mean, I've heard you do countless collegiate games in your career as a, bro- a big-time broadcaster. So uh, kudos to you. We're both very, very fortunate, and uh, you have clearly made the game much better. And I know this much. The Bengal fans, the Houday Nation, think the world of Dave Lapham and all that he brings. Coach, I appreciate you. I mean, the game has been uh, been kind to us and our families. I mean, there's no, no two ways about that for sure. And – you are a great one, Coach. Not only uh, are you a tremendous uh, advocate for, for football in the National Football League, you're an unbelievable human being. I can state that for a fact. You are the best. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you and, and the privilege to be with you today in the trenches, Dave. Thank you very much. You're the man, Coach. Have a great one. All right. You take care now. Find a stud out there in Indy for us. We will. Who day? Who day, baby? Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.